Hi, my name is Tim Stokes, founder of Profit Transformations. Today we're talking about step six of the seven steps to business certainty, secrets of sales and marketing. Here's the Tim Stokes definition of the purpose of marketing. Not one that you're going to find in any textbooks or online, but my own version from being a management expert and a trainer that looks at profit and loss statements of businesses. The purpose of marketing is to generate more clients than you need so you can control your prices. What happens is in our business world, business owners typically have a fear of putting their prices up because they fear that they'll lose too many customers. And that number one mindset that they have, and fear is false evidence appearing real, it's a mindset. They have that mindset and that prevents them from running very, very profitable businesses. And if they don't have enough customers coming in the door already and buying from them, then they will be concerned about raising their prices because they have this scarcity mindset. They're scared of losing what they might already have. And as a result, they don't ever make decent profit margins. Now, 90% of businesses are running with a net profit margin that I believe is too low. And because they're too low, they have a cash flow problem. And this is the only way to really effectively change that mindset is to bring a flood of clients consistently into the business. And it is a very achievable goal. When you bring a flood of customers into the business, as I have with clients over the years, they either have two choices. They either have to raise their prices because they have too many customers coming in or they need to go and hire one, two or three more employees in a very short period of time, especially when you tap into the extraordinary power of some of the strategies that I teach clients where some of them have tripled their sales in a month as a result of a strategy being implemented. So we want to bring a flood of customers, hopefully at a bit of a controlled rate, not all, all at the same time, but to maintain it consistently. That's what we want to do. And when we do that, then you don't have this fear of losing customers if you pro put your prices up. It's almost like you don't have a choice to do it. And with clients over the years that I've worked with, I've taken their businesses to 20% plus net profit margins by solving their ability to get enough customers. And when you get a business over 20% net profit margin, it's turning over a million or more, the profit is extraordinary. You got two or three, four, five hundred thousand sitting there in net profit, and you might only have 10 or 15 employees. You need a good accountant at that time as well. But these are the great challenges of business. These are much better challenges than not having enough inquiries or can't find enough work to keep people going for what the costs or the employees are that you have. Now, what business owners don't really understand is you, you can't just have one form of lead generation, which is a website. And years ago, that used to be the Yellow Pages ad. Business owners had to have the Yellow Pages ad in, and that was it. Almost the whole marketing contribution to their business for a year was to ring up the Yellow Pages rep and said, can you, can you run my ad again? And that was it. These days, business owners tend to sweat on the website, maybe a little bit of SEO, and maybe a little bit of Google AdWords, and hopefully they're getting into social media as well. But I find businesses are still a little bit behind the eight ball because they don't understand that you can't just do one or two forms of lead generation. You need five to ten at least coming in as ways that people are finding out about your business. And then you can get to the point where you have too many customers coming in, too many inquiries, too many paying clients. And that way you can control your prices and charge what you want to charge and make the margins that you need to have a profitable business that hopefully, with a bit of training, can work completely without you. So that's what this video is about. We're going to talk about some of these ways that we can break this, this fear of losing customers so that we can actually make more profit, not just increase our sales and increase our customers. That's not what the marketing exercise, I believe, is about. It's not just about getting more customers. It's about getting more profitable customers so your profit margins jump, hit that 20% plus figure, and then you go for volume, and then you can do all the marking you like when your profit margins are higher. Businesses need profitable sales. Too many business owners are too focused and too caught up in getting sales for sales sakes in the hope, and I use the word with double inverted commas, that those people that buy will come back even if they make a loss on the first sale from acquiring their customers. Something that we need to give a lot more emphasis and look at as we're marketing a business. So it becomes about cost-effective client acquisitions. Now the question is, you need to get a profit return if you're a service or manufacturing business. So it comes down to the question, do you need a gross or net profit return? 
So service and manufacturing businesses, you need to get a net profit return. I've worked on this subject for 20 years ever since I've come across it. Jay Abraham was one of the first marketers that in the world that promoted so much information about marketing and seminars all over the world. And he talked about acquisition costs and lifetime value. And in business, you need to get a profit return from the marketing. Now, if you spend $1,000 on a promotion, then I believe, I work on a 10 times rule or a 10% rule, that $1,000 promotion needs to generate $10,000 in sales. And if it doesn't, then you're not going to be very profitable with your marketing typically. Now, the lifetime value is an interesting discussion or interesting debate, I should say, where customers may come back not once but two, three, five times. Now, that's fine, but if you start factoring the lifetime value of a customer that comes back once every six months, you can't cash flow the marketing. You can't afford to wait six months to pay for the marketing from profit return. What's paying for your marketing is not sales, it's actually profit. It's what's left over after every cost has come out of your business proportion to every single sale, that is profit. And if you think that you can spend $100 and get a customer to spend $100 and then they spend $1,000 with you once $100 a year for the next 10 years, you'll be bankrupt. You won't have the money to pay for the marketing. And that's what enough, enough people in business don't quite understand with this acquisition cost and lifetime value discussion. You've got to be able to cash flow it. That's the management cap that I wear when I sort of say this. Yes, from a marketing perspective, it's great to have a lifetime value of thousands of dollars from people spending $50 a month, but you can't cash flow it to wait for the money to come back to keep spending more on marketing. You just can't cash flow it. So that's something to consider in a business. So net profit, I work on the 10% rule, but what if your business is making a 2% net profit? What if it's making minus 5% net profit margin right now? I still work on the 10% rule. Because you can't, well, obviously you can't get a profit return if you're running a, a loss in your business in the first place. And if you're running a 15 or 20% net profit margin, then you could potentially say, I'm prepared to pay more to acquire customers. But I've used the 10% rule for 20 years in all the companies I've owned and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of businesses that I've trained. And it's been a very good rule proven over time to work really, really well. That's the 10% rule. So if you spend $50 on a promotion, you want to get $500 in sales. Now, if the customer repeats buys in the same month, then sure, you could look at that as a total ROI, what you can afford to acquire. But as a basic rule, that's a principle I work on. Retail, it's a little bit different. I consider the rent the acquisition cost where you need to get a net profit return. If your rent is 3000 a month, let's say, then without any other advertising, you want to be doing 30000 a month in sales to pay for the rent so you're getting a net profit return, working on that 10% rule as well. Any additional marketing, then you just need to get a gross profit because your rent is pretty much covering it from that perspective. So it's a little bit... Without going into a lot of depth in a video, I can't, but this is something I'm happy to chat to people about in our Business Certainty Workshop series about what specific figure you need to look at for your business. But these are general principles, general rules I've used for many years to the test of time. If you're an online digital product business, then it's not uncommon to have 50% is what your income goes to an affiliate marketer. It's a very common figure these days. And it's pretty much whatever is a reasonable cost. 50% may seem really high, but there's no real much by way of overheads in a digital product business. If you've got a website sending ebooks or training courses that are fully automated, no time involved, then 50% isn't too bad. And some people say to me, what about these websites that promote these 50% off vouchers and give you a bulk number of sales coming to your business? Well, my personal point of view is I'm completely 100% against them. Because the type of people that love those 20 to 50% off vouchers, uh, all they're looking for is 20 to 50% off vouchers and they have no loyalty. So if you assume that those people are going to come back to buy, you may be sadly mistaken to find out that they don't. It is a massive risk to undertake those sort of promotions as a way to get customers to come to your business first. Now, you know what I'm talking about from your own experience. If you go out and find places that sell something at a 50% off sale, sure, you'll go there, I'll go there, everyone loves to go there. 
but you feel like well that's a big that's a nice that's a nice experience and you associate the experience of buying from a store with the massive saving that's your experience that you associate with that business now so you're waiting for them to have another sale so you can come back and have that 50 percent off again they're training you not to pay full price by this promotion it's one of the biggest mistakes i see businesses make is they willingly jump into these things and i think this is bankrupting a lot of companies in our marketplace or really hurting their profits when you go 20 50 percent off you're making zero net profit margin you, you you're running at a loss because you're taking that straight off whatever your net profit margin is so keep that in mind but online digital products that don't have the overheads of a normal business and rent and vehicles and employees and phones and all that then sure you can start going to a higher rate so hopefully that's given you a better idea of understanding what sort of things you need to do to acquire a customer too many clients i've worked with over the years they might have an average dollar sale of 500 dollars and it cost them 200 dollars just to acquire the customer and they're wondering why there's no profit in the business and that's because they say you've lost your profit just getting the customer it's nothing to do with the rest of your business and the employees not pulling their weight and they're not doing their work and you that's why you're looking at your profit loss statement saying you're making little profit or none it's because your acquisition cost lost the profit of the job or the work before you actually did it so keep this in mind with all of your marketing from this point on so sales and marketing there are two different sides to it I like to separate the two and say sales is converting leads into sales and it's the verbal conversation side of winning customers you generate an inquiry you don't generate a customer businesses don't generate customers they they generate website visitors which are prospects or even suspects and then as a result of talking to business owners that's when the sales are made so I consider sales that verbal element of the discussion and marketing is what warms people up to want to talk to you in your business and they're choosing to look at your business from all your competitors so it's standing out from the crowd with marketing that's what it's all about standing out so that you look different you look better you look like you're more of an authority you're professional in your industry and standing out from the crowd and then persuading people once you've got their attention then you have got to persuade them and then from there on then the sales side of it can kick in and then you can have your discussion and talk to people and convert them both require years of training to master or months of training to reap enormous rewards business owners typically haven't spent much money on these two and rarely is it for a business owner to see the value of investing in sales training they just feel that they have this mindset that they can't change things well customers buy or they don't or no one can teach me how to sell my products better or oh, I don't want to be one of those pushy people in sales they have all these beliefs and these are all limiting beliefs that prevent them becoming exceptional in sales now in sales I've been complimented by business owners just after they paid me on the fact that I wasn't a salesperson just after they paid me two thousand dollars this happened years and years ago when I started understanding the secret ingredients of sales the secret ingredients in sales is build rapport you buy from people you like and or relate to and that's where people don't get this training because they think it's going to lead them into becoming this ogre this horrible pushy aggressive person that no one will like it's actually the complete opposite and marketing is a similar thing where how many courses have you attended how many tens of thousands have you spent learning this massive phenomenal subject you could spend five lifetimes learning how much have you invested in training yourself and don't think you can outsource it because you don't know what you don't know about the subject which means who you outsource it to could be really poor at doing effective marketing for you they're not that switched on they might have a good salesperson selling it to you but they may not be very very good and therefore you wonder why it's not working for for you even though over years you spent a lot of money so they're two very interesting subjects that I think you need to get trained on I'm an absolute advocate for years of training on the two let's look at the selling side of this first the two sides of it opportunities are everywhere in your business I believe every business has gold waiting to be discovered and the training is what shows you where to look it's always there in every business I've ever seen I see phenomenal potential and that's where my clients are sometimes gobsmacked stunned amazed when we liberate a hundred or two hundred thousand in profit and yet we haven't even talked about marketing yet for some of them sometimes it is marketing a lot of time it's not there's so much profit in businesses waiting to be had when you know how and it's always that everything's easy when you know how 
Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. So gold is found in conversion rates. It's the best place to find gold in every business I've nearly ever seen is in conversion rates. Unless your business is running a 90% plus conversion rate, you're a pizza, pizza business where everyone rings up and buys a pizza. If your conversion rate is not 90%, then there is a huge amount of gold to be found. I work with a go-kart parts and carts. He sold go-karts and he sold parts for go-karts. He was a retail store in Sydney. It was years ago, and his conversion rate was 68%. I was pretty impressed. I said, that's pretty good, actually. But retailers tend to be pretty high, depending on the industry. They tend to be over 50% or over 60%. And I thought, at 68%, that's pretty good. But it warrants putting in a sales system anyway. So let's put the sales system in and just see how we go. So we, we created it all. It took about a month to do it all. Exactly what are you going to say when people answer the when you answer the phone? Exactly what are you going to say? when people walk in the door, what are you going to talk about, how are you going to structure that as a whole sales process and all of it was worded out verbatim and practiced and then we implemented. Guess what the conversion rate was the next week? It was 68%. Well, the next week it hit 100%. I was amazed, the business owner was amazed, every single person that contacted that, that business bought and we maintained a very high conversion rate in the high 80%, sometimes hitting mid 90s in that business for months later. And so when people think that, oh, my conversion rate's pretty good, well, hang on a second, to go from 68 to 100 is close to a 50% increase in sales in a week. That's a massive jump for someone that probably assumed before we did this exercise that it probably wasn't that value in our that much value in our time to develop that strategy. So it's an example where people's mindsets can get in the way of profit. So they are super easy to increase conversion rates, but only after you measure them accurately will you believe you can improve your conversion rates. Like this retail said, oh, I might, we get pretty much every sale that comes into the business. And I said, well, let's measure it anyway. Oh, it's 68%. Well, that's pretty high. I don't know if we can improve on that. That was how the discussion went. I said, well, I don't assume anything. I'm, I don't have a mindset of assumptions on anything. I want to check it out, measure it, find out. And that was the result. And it's the same in your business, I'm sure. And there are always at least two conversion rates from a sales perspective. You have a lead to quote and a quote to sale. I go into businesses and if I find the conversion rate is low in a service and manufacturing business and I consider anything under 45% low, then the first thing I want to look at is the qualifying techniques. How are you qualifying people so that you're not doing quotes for everyone? Because quote is the component that takes half an hour or an hour or two days or two days or some of my builder clients has taken a week just to do a quote. So that's that component that determines whether those people that you're talking to are worthwhile doing a quote. Too many businesses do quotes for everyone and then they wonder why their conversion rates are poor and they get frustrated and you get salespeople that feel like they're wasting their time and they're sick of their job because they're not they're not happy in their job because they're wasting time with people that are never going to buy and they feel that. So this is a big one. Lead to quote conversion rate and then quote to sale is easy to increase. So instead of doing 10 quotes and winning three, so that might be a lead to sale conversion rate. You do 10 quotes and you win three. Well, what if we took three out of the 10 by deselecting them because we helped them on the phone and we recognized we couldn't help them? So now we're winning three out of seven. So our conversion rate's gone from three out of 10, 30%, to three out of seven, which is about 42%. So our conversion rates jumped and you've just increased your net profit margin because you've freed up time. Then you can do more quotes and by doing more quotes without hiring another salesperson to do them those more, those more quotes or paying someone more hours to do the same number of quotes, your profit margins have increased because your sales will increase, your turnover will increase without an increase in cost. So that's a simple analogy. Focus on reducing lead to quote conversion rate first. A lot of my best clients in the service industries that deal with a lot of homeowners um, are running about a 67% lead to quote conversion rate. And that's things that I train people on in the winning sales through integrity training workshop that I run. I train business owners on exactly how to do this and what words to use and how do you deselect people. It's a bit of a skill. I can't go into it much here because it's that's, that's part of a significant aspect of the training but it's something I just recommend you start thinking about now. There are over 50 strategies to increase quote to sale conversion rates. So how many are you using at the moment? Do you use them? Do you focus on it? 
if you're not measuring it, it's out of sight, out of mind. That's why I say the first thing is let's measure it and find out what it is. And then you'll get more interested in it. And it's always lower than what you think. Uh, I don't know how many business owners I've worked with over the years where I said, what's your, what's your conversion rate? Oh, it's pretty good, about 50%. And then it's 13% or 12 or 22 One of my clients recently had five salespeople. Not one of them have gone over 22%. Now he's got a sales lady in there who's hitting 50% because of the training. So it's doubled their turnover just by training them in sales. So it's something to think about with conversion rates. Sales training is one. We'll touch on a few others in a moment. So here's my top five conversion rates. The first one is sales training because business owners, 99% of business owners don't pay for sales training, never have, don't see the value of it, limiting beliefs, mindset, doesn't think it's valuable. So that's number one. Offers are a huge one as well. What are you giving people? What are you gifting people? Free reports, free video, free training, free samples, free product tests. Give them something. Give them a taste test of what your business is about. Also, the eight principles of persuasion. Robert Caldini wrote a good book called Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, and he talks about, I think it's six principles of influence in that book. Well, there's others that I've figured out and work with, and I train business owners in the Business Certainty Workshop series. It takes quite a bit of time to train business owners on this subject, but reading that book will give you some good heads up on that. And it's phenomenal how much difference those sort of things can make. Define your USP, unique selling proposition. I think it's a poorly worded terminology. I just think it should be a UBS, your unique benefit statement, as in what's the unique benefit that you offer to people when they buy from your business? And it comes down to answering this one question really effectively. Why should I buy from you and not your competitors? And if you can't answer that question with something that makes me go, wow, impressive, like if you say things like experience and quality, they're all boring things that everyone says. You need to say something that's far more unique. And when you do, you attract people and then price becomes secondary because they buy on the value that you offer people in the marketplace. And every business can do this. Sometimes it means you need to introduce some other aspects of your business. And one of the simple ones is guarantees. Guarantee a delivery. Guarantee Something that is a fear or a concern or a frustration with your customers and those are buying emotions. If you can take away people's fear, take away people's risk, their concerns, they will throw a lot more money at you. So that's another one as well. Which ones do you want to use or learn for a fast profit jump? What if I said to you, if I trained you over a period of a few months on some of these conversion rate strategies, we could give you 10,000 more profit in a couple of months. Would that inspire you? There, The sales training has actually done that for a lot of clients in one month. I've had the highest improvement I've had is 357%. So three and a half times their turnover within 30 days as a result of a sales training. That was for a real estate agent that had been in the industry for 20 years and said, oh, I've been to so many sales training. I'm just here because the guys are here. And at the end of the day, he said, you've impressed me. You've said stuff I've never seen and I've been to dozens of sales training. I'll get back to you. A month later, he rang me up and said, my sales are triple, 357%. I said, thank you. And he was a real estate agent. And that's an example of what can happen. So some of these other ones can be the same. They can be explosive in the growth effect with what can happen. You can increase your profits rapidly with using these. And these are five of the 50 as I touched on. But which ones can you use? Which ones can you think about? What are the fears? What are the concerns? What are the frustrations that your potential customers have? Not your customers, but potential customers have before they buy from your business. And typically your business is categorized into an industry. One of my clients, he has a window business and he gets categorized as a trade industry. So therefore, he's probably unreliable because that's kind of a perception that people have towards tradies in Australia. So that's an example. So some some questions you need to answer on that and have a look at some of these different areas of what you can do. Offers are awesome for improvement. So let's share, I'll share you some of the ones that I like to use on what sort of offers you can have. A free, free report on four things you must know before you buy anything from builders, plumbers, accountants, whatever it is. That's an example. I'm not saying this is the best example, but this is just a simple example is to have a 
some sort of report that people want or will need and it taps into the emotions of a fear of the unknown that prospects may have before they buy from your industry so having a free report something like that free videos free newsletters similar sort of thing free free safety check some of the electrician clients that I've had over the years they've used a free safety check they find that's a pretty good offer gets people interested in ringing their business and even buying from them as a result of that so try and figure out something like this you can use for your own business buy two get one free love our products are returning and free no questions asked the wording has some magic to it and it's figuring out what the wording needs to be you can have a great offer and it's poorly worded and described and therefore the offer fails or you're offering something that people have no interest in and that's why it fails if it's got an emotive element to it where there's a risk or a concern or a fear that people have you're going to get far more traction in the marketplace when you use it on time or we'll pay you fifty dollars cash wouldn't it be good when you're a customer and you ring someone up and they come to your home to give you a quote and they say, if we're late, we'll pay you $50 cash for the inconvenience. How would you feel about that? Would that impress you and get you interested in wanting to contact that company just reading that alone? And the answer from a lot of business owners I've asked that too is the big head nods. When I ask this in seminars, imagine a trade company that said, not only will we be on time, if we're outside of 15 minutes of the agreed time, we'll pay you $50 cash when we turn up, and that's our promise. And that's in a pretty interesting offer. Now, I had a builder once that said, if we don't finish your room extension, we'll pay you $500 every week in cash for every week we're beyond our scheduled completion date. That's a pretty interesting offer. So these offers as I'm saying them to you do you sort of say hmm that's attractive does it kind of kick in that self-interest self-focus sort of thinking where you go oh you got me interested keep talking because that's the way you've got to word them in such a way that your prospects for your business are thinking man that's a pretty attractive offer I'm pretty interested in this that's what I like you to be thinking about conversion rate and your prices to the uneducated thinking they think it's a seesaw when my prices go up, my sales will go down because people don't want to pay more for something. So that's my fear. They think it's a seesaw. When to a trained thinker on these subjects, this is what they experience. I'm putting my prices up and I'm raising my conversion rates. Wow, I didn't think that was possible before. This is the difference between training on mindsets, which is what the Business Certainty Workshop series is all about. Let's train you on changing your mindset so therefore you don't resist the strategies we'll give you to achieve these extraordinary outcomes. Now, most people are skeptical that this is even possible. I understand that. Sure, lots of people promise lots of things and don't deliver on it. I understand that. I'm one of them myself. I find things hard to believe myself. But when you train people on mindset, you give them belief, you give them experience, you give them the facts, you show them exactly how to make it work, you give them the ability to measure so they can see the results before and after, then they experience it. I've even had clients over the years that have been skeptical that the training was working until I said, well, we've been working together six months. They said, yeah, let's go back and look at the spreadsheets from a few months ago. I said, okay. We looked at them. I said, look, your conversion rate was 30%. It's now 48. That's a 50% plus increase, isn't it? He said, oh, yeah. I said, haven't you put your prices up a couple of times by 10%? Oh, yeah. And I said, we haven't talked about lead generation yet, have we? He goes, no. But I said, you've hired three more employees since we've been working together, haven't you? He goes, Oh, yeah. So you've actually grown 50% since we've been working together. Oh, yeah, so we have. So I've learned over the years that even when it happens for people, they still don't recognize it's happening. So, yeah, if you find this hard to believe, you're like nearly everyone else that I've worked with as clients. But the question I have for you is, are you open-minded with that skepticism or closed? This is what can happen. It's happened for dozens and dozens and dozens of clients. So many I've just lost track and can't keep up with the ones that have experienced this. Bottom one, this train thinker outcome for their businesses. So it can happen for them. It can happen for you. Marketing conversion rates, a little bit different to sales conversion rates. You have a website bounce rate, which is not that hard to work out. We'll show you that in a little bit. In a little bit. You want to aim for less than 45%. A lot of websites are running 55, 65, things like that. When your website gets a bit old, you'll see that. It'll be time to get a new one once your bounce rate starts getting up a bit. And what that means is that what percentage of people leave your website within 30 seconds of turning up on it. 
that's a very in interesting thing because what it is is their perception of your website doesn't meet theirs and they don't like it and they think it's dull and boring and that's it they're gone see ya and you've lost them now obviously that's something you can improve and when you do you're talking a significant boost in visitors and that proportionally means significant boost in leads significant boost in contacts significant quotes significant sales profits go up that's a result visitor conversion rate so how many people that visit your website actually phone call you or opt in and that's not that hard to track it's pretty easy to measure we'll talk about that in a little bit email subscribers to converted sale ratio so someone becomes an email subscriber how many of those actually go into a verbal conversation and then how many of those actually buy so lead to quote quote to sale that's another good conversion rate we want to look at social media marketing click-through rates so that's the cost or click-through rate is how many people see the ads how many people click on the ads that's click-through rate we want to know that and cost per click CPC so CTR CPC on Facebook Facebook is a fantastic place to advertise not all but a lot a big percentage a large majority of the percentage of businesses and that's something that we want to look at from a marketing conversion rate post to engagement conversion rates how many posts you put out how many likes do you get from those posts what sort of engagement or comments are you getting from that as well is a very interesting marketing conversion rate email special officer so if you emailed off promotions to your database your prospects then how many sales do you get from that and one of the biggest things that I see very very few businesses doing is ever emailing previous customers they don't see the need and they just don't bother and they're missing out on massive profit increases because of a law of marketing is it costs six times more to get a new customer to buy from you than what it does to get a previous customer to buy from you why aren't you going back to previous customers and emailing every person who's ever bought from you once a month or fortnightly I recommend fortnightly and just keeping in contact with them every now and again with some interesting tips and articles and news and adding value to your relationship and that way when you want to promote something else you've got their attention and they're more likely to buy it's it's zero cost marketing cost you nothing really to do this all of these and so much more can be tracked with Google Analytics it's a free software and if you haven't spent hours and hours on Google Analytics you're missing out on the power of it because I have spent hours and hours looking at it and it's just extraordinary you can go into country you look at the country people then you can drill into that and say okay out of the people in the country which ones are new visitors which ones are repeat oh let's look at the returning or repeat ones and then you look at them you look at your bounce rates for all these different things as well by country um, by new visitors it's just extraordinary and and if you're not spending hours on it or you haven't spent hours you're missing out on what it can tell you about what you need to do with your website you can even set up split run tests where you can have two home pages every second person that comes through Google will go to a different home page and you can see the difference between the two by testing one home page against the other putting a video on your home page with people that I've worked with as clients that I've, I've worked with them and they've got a website developer either one I've recommended or their own if they if they're savvy and they're smart I'll say let's look at the difference in your opt-in rates by putting a video on your home page and they're typically going from opt-in rates of 2% to 18% massive increase as a result the phases of making sales well this isn't always relevant for all industries for for my industry I've got to build a lot of awareness it is relevant for your business in one way I'll share with that in a little while what that is so awareness is where they're a prospect and they're becoming aware of what your business is or what your industry is about and what it offers I fit into a category of really business management training that's non-academic it's for business owners only pretty much I get a couple of general managers coming through but it's predominantly it's completely non-academic it's not come out of textbooks it's come from pure experience of 30 years of business I don't really fit into a category so people consider me a business coach but I'm not and the, the clients I've had say you're not a, you're definitely not a business coach because business coaches typically don't talk about anything like some of the things you get into they, they're a very narrow niche so I don't kind of fit into a category so I've got to build this awareness from what I do and that's where that's the first phase of marketing and I use videos like you're watching now as a way to build that awareness interest has a level of interest in buying one day so these are people that are interested in your business and they may like your Facebook page or like your profile and LinkedIn or Twitter or one of your social media they have an interest in your industry to buy from you one day 
then we get them to the level or they may get to the level where they recognize they need to buy soon that's the need level the next one is the want level where they have a very strong intention there to buy very soon so that's what it is it's a strong intention I really want to buy this and that want is when the emotion starts to kick in and then desire is when they it's like an amplified want I really really want it that's desire I have to have it I'm going shopping today to buy it now this process can take months might even take years for some people they want to buy their own home one day so they're aware of it and they they're already looking for business or places they may buy it maybe real estate agents to buy and then interest need want desire so for some businesses these five steps are very long drawn out for others it could happen pretty rapidly but not enough businesses are really doing enough from the awareness point of view so most industries don't need to build a really strong awareness but social media is the place to do it so some businesses they're very quick they might say I need to get my pool cleaned um, I'll go type in pool cleaners for my suburb there they are um, and they're in need and then they have a chat to them and they go yep yep yeah I want to do this yeah yeah go and do it yeah I'll have it now thanks so they might go from need to desire within hour one hour if you like and then the purchase is made it could happen that fast but some businesses don't have that luxury and that's where social media is phenomenal because social media is for businesses that don't always have that luxury that people go from interest need want desire purchase that quick and my industry is like that a lot of service professionals are like that they need to be in the awareness building phase and social media is where you start that process because that's where people live online these days they live online with social media they don't live on Google looking at websites typically they're living in social media that's where you want to be so basic marketing sources you need you need to have your website and I'm a really big advocate to pretty much say you got to have a video on your home page and an opt-in for something for free on your home page now if you don't think this will work prove me wrong set it up do it properly do it professionally and then if you get no opt-ins for a week or a month then I'll say yeah you're right but it's a pretty big call to say that it won't work and you don't need to do it and it's something I learned when I started learning SEO back in about 2002 before most people never even heard of those three letters put together the guy that I work with he could get not rank number one two or three in Google and he found you get more sales from number three he was just that good back in 2002 and he didn't want to rank number one he said I want to be number three they window shop at the first two and they buy from the third one interesting thinking back then but what he said to me was the purpose of a website is not to get sales the purpose of a website is to get people interested in buying from you one day so you need to have an opt-in because half the people that opt in a lot for a lot of businesses are the ones that buy down the track so assuming you don't need one is a massive assumption you don't know that until you prove it for yourself and if you set up a split run home page and Google Analytics and track it wait and see and see the evidence to see it so in biz in marketing you got to test everything you can't assume anything I've made a thousand assumptions and I've been wrong a thousand times with oh I've written this great headline I'm sure it'll work oh didn't didn't work as good as the last one so those assumptions keep getting broken and that's a good way to think don't have any assumptions on marketing each web page needs to be optimized with good title tags so every page can be is indexed in Google or unless you have it set up so that every page doesn't but your service page and about us page things like that well what's the title tag that you've got on it and most businesses don't give any thought or the website developers haven't done it it's something you need to look at yourself what's the title of each of your pages free offer for subscribing from your website give them something for free for subscribing Facebook business page with 300 plus likes if you've got five likes these days if people love Facebook and they're thinking about a business they'll go looking on Facebook for a business and if they find one that's got five or ten likes or, or 20 likes they'll think hmm not very popular oh look there's one with 300 all oh, that sounds good and they'll go more likely with the one that's got hundreds and what they will the one that's got five or ten or twenty if you don't have a Facebook page at all what does that tell you YouTube business channel with three plus videos you want to have a few videos on your YouTube page and your home page video obviously you can get you can get on your YouTube channel and then it hosts from there so you want to get a few videos on that as well preferably a dozen or two but three is a minimum to get started with LinkedIn profile you want to have a personal and business page with 100 plus personal connections because again it says that you you have people that like you people that want to connect to you 
so you want to get that number up again as well and you need to have the two pages not just the one same with Facebook you need to have your personal page which you can do zero amount of work with if you don't want to make friends or you don't like Facebook fine don't do anything with your personal page and then you have a business page you have a face you have a personal account then you have a business page and then you can do everything on your business page and zero on your personal page if you like you don't have to think you have to become a Facebook uh, junkie just by having a Facebook page you don't it's the big companies do it so why not so this gives you your business some social proof and that's what it's about people don't just look at websites I, I look at a business and I wonder who owns the company I go to the about page it tells me then I go to LinkedIn and, and check them out on LinkedIn sometimes as well a lot of people are doing this they're looking at a business from a social perspective and if you've got no connections no likes no activity and just a website Sometimes I get a bit concerned, like who's running this company? I can't find them. I don't know anything about them. Hmm, I might go and look for another company. And you lose sales as a result of that. So your mission as a result of this video, I want you to check your website has title tags on each page and see if that's the ideal keyword phrase for your page. And you can adjust these things very, very easily. It might be a little bit beyond your skills, but it's something you need to learn more about your website developer is typically not the expert for this put it, get in contact with me if you want to know one of the best people you'll find anywhere in Australia and in the world he's he's learned from the best people in the world for eight years full-time spent a genuine over a hundred thousand learning from the best guys in the world and um, I recommend a lot of people to him as a result and he's the one that's taking care of my website and so there are people around that this stuff's a walk in the park if it's all unfamiliar with you don't think that your website developer is the SEO um, God of heaven that can do everything because website developing and SEO can be dramatically different skill sets it's hard to get people that can do both very very challenging constructor an offer for website visitors and it's like building a sales funnel I highly recommend you do it Put a few things together give them a free report at least give them a free book free video free something as a result of them opting in and watch what happens when you do you'll get more sales set up your social media personal and business pages again if you get stuck with this email me and I'll send you a link to a video that shows you how to set up the various social media pages if you've got no idea how to do this and it's something that you've really really got to take seriously because social media is the new marketing not just having a website you need to grab people before they get to websites before they get to that need level identify your best conversion rate strategies from this video and just having a really good think about the subject there are so many that can make you really really fast increases in your profits in, in days and weeks extraordinary difference what can happen when you work on these I've had clients in a one day sales training workshop three quarters of the way through get a phone call use the skills I gave them and they want a, a sale for a thirty thousand dollar website from a for a museum interstate and they'd never met them before and all got done on the phone and he come back in after the break and said I just use your techniques and he said they are astounding I just want to sale for a thirty thousand dollar value using what you taught me and and it's the guy I've never met and he's not even in the same state and I probably won't meet him and he's agreed to go ahead and he's emailing me through the details he said I can't believe how well this stuff works so that's an example where you can have instant improvements in your profits with a bit of training and what difference that can make so what's next step seven management the final phase so stay tuned and I'll talk to you then